The Fortnite World Cup was the hardest gaming event ever to qualify to, with over 40 million players competing in the open qualifiers. That means that the players who did end up placing good enough to get to the finals in New York were exceptional talents. But it's now been almost five years since the legendary event. So what exactly happened to the World Cup qualifiers? That is what we're exploring today. Before talking about the insane stories of the World Cup qualifiers, I want to quickly talk about Gear Up. If you're someone who struggles with ping, I highly recommend checking out this software. But a ton of tournaments are right around the corner, you gotta make sure to give yourself the best odds of succeeding, and by using Gear Up, you'll do exactly that. Gear Up will help your ping get noticeably lower and more stable by optimizing your connection through the use of uncongested network routes. When I use Gear Up, I go from around 50 ping all the way down to around the 20 mark. Being able to have the ping I normally play on makes the game so much more fun and also way easier. The beauty of Gear Up is that it's effortless to use. With one click, you optimize your data and your ping goes down and stays consistent. It's also used by pros like like Asian Jeff, Mero, and Day, so you know that this is an app to trust. If you're playing console, GearUp also offers something called HyperEv. This is a gaming router that easily connects to your console and stabilizes your connection. If this sounds interesting, you can test out the GearUp booster or check it out HyperEv by clicking on the first link in the description below. This is my fourth time shouting out GearUp, and the response has been super positive with tons of people saying it helps them out a lot. So check it out and let me know how it works for you. In the early days of Fortnite, a 14-year-old player came to prominence after eliminating Tfue in a game. And the coincidence of getting matched up with Tfue, as well as successfully eliminating him, came with a lot of fame. Thousands of viewers on Twitch and 10 plus million views on the single YouTube video where he showcased the fight. After 10 months of riding the momentum, making the most out of the given opportunity and grinding hard, the World Cup qualifiers would begin. And in the very first duo qualifier, he would go on to place second, securing $50,000 and his ticket to the finals in New York. The player I'm talking about is of course Skeptic, the 14 year old who built a content creation empire after getting dealt a lucky hand and working his ass off to make sure the fame stuck around. Now it turns out that Skeptic's incredible success as a content creator as well as his potential as a competitive player opened the eyes of many organizations. In August of 2018 it was announced that Skeptic had joined the org Misfits Gaming, a team that is well known for their respectable salaries. So Skeptic as a 14 year old was already making great money and additionally was able to represent an amazing team. Now, as months went by and Fortnite's hype only got bigger and bigger, Epic Games decided to, on February 22nd, 2019, announce the very tournament that makes Skeptic eligible for a spot in this video, the World Cup. And for this tournament, he would partner up with his org mate, Klix, another young, super promising player. During practice and all tournaments leading up to the qualifiers, there was no denying that Klix was a way better competitive player than Skeptic, a truth that that Skeptic wasn't so comfortable with. However, even though Clicks, competitively speaking, was better, Skeptic was still an absurd amount more successful when it came to content creation. For reference, in March of 2019, Clicks streamed close to 50 hours with 75 average viewers. And Skeptic, well, he streamed only 19 hours and had 10 times the average viewers of Clicks. In addition, in 2019, Misfits also made a video on both Skeptic and Clicks, and Skeptic's video would get 5.5 million views, and Clicks' video would quote unquote only get 2.9 million views. It's hard to imagine today that Skeptic was the more famous of the two, but that was very much the truth in the beginning of 2019. However, with April right around the corner and the first Duo World Cup qualifier, this would all change. In dominant fashion, Clicks and Skeptic would go on to secure their ticket to the New York Finals, placing second and taking home 4,000 bucks from their online placement, and an additional 50,000 in guaranteed secured earnings from the actual finals. Unfortunately for Skeptic, the community was very harsh on him, even though he didn't actually play bad at all in the week they qualled. That would come later in the other qualifiers. Skeptic was not able to do anything noteworthy in solos during the five opportunities he had. And as time flew by, it was time to play on the big stage in New York. Going into the tournament, nobody really believed in the duo of Clicks and Skeptic. And sadly, the results weren't phenomenal either, ending in a 35th place. The interesting part about this placement, however, is that Skeptic actually played better than Clicks when it really mattered. After the World Cup was over, Klix would go on to split with Skeptic, and they would have a tiny bit of beef on Twitter, mainly coming from Skeptic himself. Nothing too serious though, but there's no denying that Klix handled the situation more maturely. So this was it, right? No more good placements for Skeptic. Well, actually, that's not at all what happened. After coming home from New York, Skeptic would go on to consistently earn in the tournaments he played. But unfortunately, it wouldn't last long, and the bad placements and no earnings would come in shortly after his few successes. As 
as a result of his talent no longer being enough to consistently earn in tournaments, Skeptic started heavily focusing on content in 2020, and he was relatively successful in doing so, getting an average slightly above 1 million long-form views on YouTube a month, and even averaging as much as 1,635 viewers on Twitch in the month of May, which by far was his best month ever. 2020 was undeniably a good year for Skeptic. However, in 2021, it seemed as though he needed a bit of a break from social media, as he was streaming way less hours and also posting way fewer videos. This naturally ended up with worse performance, less relevancy, and also less money. Towards the end of the year, in August, Skeptic announced that he had gone into NFTs, like so many other ex-pro players. After he announced his entry into a totally different world than Fortnite, he would also post himself in front of a Tesla, promoting an actual NFT launch. In addition to focusing on these non-fungible tokens, he was also putting in an impressive amount of work into the gym, building a very respectable physique. NFTs and the gym is something that Skeptic has been very consistent at, in contrast to his content. In 2022, Skeptic streamed for 97 hours, and in 2023, only 4 hours. On top of that, he has only posted 11 videos on his YouTube in a span of these two years, with no social media presence on either in 2024. Even with the limited content, Skeptic is still, by the look of things, doing fantastic financially speaking. He posted that he got himself a little birthday treat on May 4th, 2023, where he could be seen in a picture with a Tesla Model S. Since then, he has kept grinding the gym, he's still active in the Web3 and NFT community, and he has even become an ambassador for Cope GG, which is a charitable organization promoting the positive aspects of competitive gaming and content creation. There is no denying that Skeptic not only had a talent for Fortnite in the early days, but he also has a talent for online entrepreneurship. If he sees an opportunity, he is not afraid to give it a go, even if he will get heavily criticized for it. You see, if there's one thing Skeptic really became super good at over the years, it was tolerating intensely negative feedback from the community. His story is one filled with opportunities that he managed to perfectly execute on. Some of the harshest feedback a player has ever received in the history of Fortnite, and eventually, by the look of things, redemption. Whilst we're on the topic of players who have been extremely harshly criticized, we also need to talk about Sif. His story is one of the most intricate that has ever come from Fortnite competitive. So, let's take a deep dive into it. In the very beginning of Fortnite, Sif was someone who took the game more easily than most. Already from day one, he was winning games and getting high elims. And then only a few months later, in 2018, when he got the opportunity to play some of the very first tournaments ever hosted, he would take them by storm. Crazily enough, getting third place and taking on $1,000 in his first tournament appearance. Only one week after his 1k win, there would open up another opportunity for Sif. In fact, one of the biggest opportunities Fortnite has ever given out. The Full Skirmish Week 6, which was an open LAN tournament with a prize pool of a whopping $1.85 million. The only slight issue for Sif was that this tourney was in San Jose, California. In other words, on the west coast of North America. And Sif, well, he was from the east coast. So so not only would this trip take a ton of effort, but also a lot of money. But Sif was confident in his Fortnite abilities, and packed his bags and went on his way to San Jose to give competitive Fortnite a proper go. When he got to the venue where the tournament would be hosted, he had to make his way through the heats, where hundreds of other aspiring young Fortnite players would compete. He had to do this in order to get to the grand finals, where there was money to be made. His partner for the tournament was none other than Ronaldo, another extremely infamous Fortnite competitor. Playing in the heats, he would meet a ton of other top tier professional players like Tfue, Sexro, Mitro, and Sate. But even when competing against the top international players, he would easily succeed in making his way into the grand finals. In the finals, he wouldn't go on to make $1,000 like he did in the week prior, but $10,000, collectively with Ronaldo and a placement of 13th. Needless to say, Sif was one of the most talented players in the early days of Fortnite. And after the full skirmish, the placements would keep coming in. 20th in the Winter Real qualifiers, 8th in the Gauntlet Cup, and 5th in the Scallywag Tournament. But these tournaments would be nothing in comparison to what was to come, namely the World Cup Qualifiers. Already in the very first week of Opens, Sif would bang out an incredible placement. 8th in Opens, getting 31 Elims, which by all means was an incredible result. The day after, in the finals however, he would place 980th, only taking home 150 USD. Sif was far from satisfied with the result, and knew he needed to put his head down, fix his mistakes, and just be better for the upcoming opportunity in duos the week after. And as the week went by and he made a better strategy for the finals compared to what he had in solos, he would go on to start his duo run with a 28th place in the opens, with his treble
trustworthy partner, Ronaldo. The day after, in the finals, they would pop off and get 9th place and take home 1,250 bucks each. This day was heartbreaking for the duo, as they were only 3 points short of qualifying to New York and bagging a guaranteed 50k. Their final game of this qualifier was a 20th place with no Williams, meaning they didn't get a single point when it mattered the most. By simply getting a top 15 with 3 Williams, they would have not only gotten their tickets to New York, but they would have also won the entire event. The next qualifier was a solos one, and Seth had had enough. This week, it was time to do whatever it took to ensure his qualification, but sadly, he decided to resort to unethical ways to make it, even when he was more than good enough to do it legit. The first nine games began with him playing like he normally would, no cheating and performing very well, being on 53 points going into the final game. But with the memory of underperforming in the final game from the week before, Seth had two of his friends land on him and not only give him two free points, but also the instant shields that came with the siphon from the eliminations. Seth would go on to win the game and play second in the qualifier, easily performing good enough to go to the New York finals. But sadly for Seth, he would shortly after get banned for obviously cheating in the tournament. The funny thing about all of this is that even if his friends didn't feed him the eliminations, Sif would have most likely qualified. Of course, the 100 shields in Siphon might have played a significant role in him winning his final game, but if his friends didn't land on him, he would have been uncontested and maybe won the game legit from there. Ronaldo, his teammate, also got fed an elimination by their friend Jesty and suffered the same fate and got banned for two weeks as well. In week 6 of the World Cup qualifiers, they would both be unbanned and go on to get 12th place in the finals, which wasn't quite enough to make New York, but regardless, they were playing good even after not having played the previous two quals. And then two weeks later in week 8, they would get 3rd place and secure their spot in the World Cup finals. Sif's solo history, however, didn't turn out quite as good, as they didn't manage to qualify after cheating to do so in week 3, a fate well deserved in most people's opinion. In the final week of duos, Sif and Ronaldo would once again prove that even with their extremely controversial past, they were insane players, finishing 8th in the final and taking home an additional $6,000 collectively. Then, 5 weeks later, when the pressure really was on and the actual World Cup in New York was on, this was Sif and Ronaldo's opportunity to prove everyone wrong. They didn't need to cheat to be better than anyone else, and this was their one chance. Well, unfortunately for both of them, they wouldn't go on to do anything noteworthy in the finals. But what we already knew to be true, the fact that they were incredibly solid players, came through regardless, as they finished in 28th place, beating out 22 of the other teams in the finals, who were also world class, all whilst getting directly hated on by the people who were attending the legendary event. If Sif and Ronaldo had never cheated and didn't have thousands of people in their ear preying on their downfall, the result would have probably been a ton better too. For about 10 months after the World Cup, Sif would continue to pursue competitive Fortnite and make relatively good money in doing so. However, the pre-World Cup Sif would never come back, and it seemed as though he understood that as he on June 2nd of 2020 dropped Fortnite for good for a newly released game called Valorant. What you have to understand about Sif is that he is exceptionally talented, whether we like it or not, and as a result of his talent, he became better than most, quickly getting to the highest rank of Valorant, and only 5 months after the game's release, he also got signed to the org Knights. Being in an org and playing at the top level of Valorant comes with a pretty substantial monthly salary, so Sif, even though brand new to another game than Fortnite, was doing pretty well financially speaking. He would remain in Knights until January 2023, when he got picked up by Team Disguised, made by the very famous YouTuber Disguised Toast. His stay here would only be until April 13th, when he for the first time in 3 years would become a free agent. He would remain orgless until very recently when he on December 11th, 2023 got picked up by the team QOR, where he still remains to this day. Through Sif's professional Valorant career, he has made approximately $9,883 from tournaments according to Liquipedia. However, the number is probably way higher than that, and one thing is for certain, and that is that his org salary through the years has been many times higher than his official tournament winnings. Sif's story is one of no second chances. Everyone in the Fortnite community started hating him after cheating in the World Cup. And although some of it was undeniably deserved, I don't think there was a good reason to keep hating on him after what was done was done. Sif never got an opportunity to redeem himself, so switching games is what was the best out for him. Luckily, it seems as though he is doing fantastic in his new ventures, making good money, being a good player in Valorant, and most importantly, yet again being liked by the community he finds himself in. The next player I'm going to be talking about is most commonly known as Nate Hill's previous duo, but he was also the very first Fortnite player I ever looked up to. And the reason I looked up to him was simply because of his unique way of succeeding in 
game is the funk or funk bomb has always played in a slow precise and methodical way that was insanely satisfying to watch and he did all of this whilst streaming with an extremely humble personality funk's playstyle allowed for super effective fights and as a result of his qualities as a player he was the world record holder for most solo versus squads elims in the early days of fortnite having this title was a big deal in the beginning of the game as there was no other real way to prove yourself luckily though on the 26th of july 2018 or in other words only three months after funk had gotten his insane world record fortnite announced the solo showdown an often forgotten tournament the format of this one was very different than anything we have today you basically played 25 games in the tournament which was available 24 7 just like hopping into a ranked matches today and based on how you performed in these 25 matches you got given a point score if you won a game with a lot of elims you got a lot of points if you died off spawn you got no points and there were no live leaderboards so you played your 25 games and waited until epic updated the entire thing the incentive behind playing was mainly v bucks if you won the tournament you would get 50k off them if you got second to fourth you got 25k 13.5 for fifth to 50th and the final 50 from 51st to 100th got given 7500 v bucks but in fortnite's blog post announcing this they also near the bottom of the post added a tiny line of text stating that eligible top performers in the solo showdown may also receive invitations to future summer skirmish events this line of text that was far down on the blog post announcing the solo showdown happened to be life-changing for those who took the event seriously eight million dollars in prize money was what epic games decided to exclusively give out through the weeks of the summer skirmish and funk bomb well he had gotten a 20th place when it was all concluded 20th place may not sound that impressive but considering 17 of the 19 that placed over him were all on console this was an amazingly good achievement funk bomb was the third best pc player in the entirety of na east when it came to the very first official online tournament you see the problem with this event was that console players only got matched against other console players and under the console definition you also had a ton of players playing on mobile and pc players only got matched against others playing on a computer but the leaderboard was all the same what i'm getting at is that on average the opposition for someone on say a ps4 was a lot easier compared to someone on a pc this is just an objective fact because not only had fortnite just come out only three months ago on ios but the average console player is also way more casual compared to the average on a computer luckily epic was able to filter out the players who were competing on pc and console and because of this funk was able to get invited to the summer skirmish and started making fortnite a highly lucrative career the fifth week of the skirmish was his first time being invited to one of the duos weeks he had played in the solos one the week prior but sadly not made any earnings this time around things were different it was his first time playing an official tourney with natale and they performed getting seventh place and an incredible twenty-four thousand dollars collectively not bad at all for a second week in a summer skirmish but little did anyone know that this would only be the start to funk bomb and natale's incredible partnership the week after in the sixth week of the summer skirmish funk and natale would put on a show and win the entire thing this tournament was in collaboration with twitch rivals so because of that they quote unquote only won eighteen thousand three hundred and fifty dollars together but they got something way more valuable and that was the taste of winning as a few weeks passed and funk kept on performing in the summer skirmish getting another second place and also a 12th the tournament wrapped up as fall was approaching the name was no longer appropriate so epic decided it was time for the legendary fall skirmish now for this one already in the very first week funk would decide to go on to meet the same destiny as sif who we talked about earlier he would get a 14 day ban from competitive but not for getting fed kills but rather for stream sniping whilst funk was eliminated in a game he was communicating to Natale how much HP the players around him was on, all whilst they were streaming them playing the tournament. For the next four weeks, Funk wasn't invited to play at all. So in the notorious sixth week of the fall skirmish, like we talked about earlier, he decided to pack his bags and play the open LAN tournament like so many other eager competitors. Just like Sif, Funk would go through the heats with flying colors, making it to the grand finals easily. And in the grand finals, Funk would perform like never before, ending up as the second best team attending. 
ending, taking home just over a quarter of a million dollars with his dependable teammate Nate Hill, only second to Tiffy and Cloaksy. As a result of this tournament placement, he would also, one and a half months later, be announced to FaZe Clan on December 10th, 2018. I don't have to say this, but 2018 was an incredible year for Funk Bomb. He accomplished more than anyone can dream of when it comes to competitive esports achievements. Hundreds of thousands in earnings, making a great community, and joining the biggest organization esports has ever seen. Going into 2019 though, he didn't slow down. The placements kept rolling in, and as the World Cup got announced, he knew he once again had to prove himself. In the very first week of solos, he would underperform and place 388th in the finals, a placement he definitely wasn't happy with. And in the week that followed, he would grind hard to ensure a better performance in duos. And the grind ended with a pretty good performance of 30th. Although not enough to make New York, Funk understood that he had what it took to make it. And in week 3 of solos, he would bang out an impressive 3rd place and ensure his ticket to the World Cup Finals. Qualifying to the Big Apple and getting 3rd place felt so good that Funk decided to do it all again the week after, but this time with Nate Hill. 3rd place yet again and one of few to double qualify to one of the biggest gaming events that has ever been hosted. In the remaining weeks, nothing crazy happened. No incredible placements. It seemed as though Funk was satisfied, and understandably so. He had done his job to the highest possible extent. Now, there was only one small little thing that needed to be done, performing in the biggest event he had ever played in. With duos being played on July 27th, 2019, Funk and Nate Hill tried their best, but sadly ended with a disappointing 31st place. Thankfully, Funk had another opportunity to prove himself the day after in the solos event. But it turns out that against the best players internationally and with the pressure of millions of people watching, Funk isn't the best. The day ended in a devastating 99th place. After the World Cup, Funk kept on playing, but by the look of things, not taking the competitive side of Fortnite anywhere near as seriously. And honestly, with much lower price pools, more and more cracked young players coming to the scene, and of course, an already highly decorated career with over $300,000 in earnings, I understand that Funk is taking a step back from competing at the very top. In addition, Funk is one of the oldest successful Fortnite players ever, currently being 28 years of age. Nowadays, Funk can mainly be seen streaming Escape from Tarkov on his Twitch channel with an additional Fortnite stream here and there. Funk's story is one of acting upon a golden opportunity that he saw in the early days of Fortnite. The result of taking action and grinding harder than most was a career that aspiring pro players only can dream of. Hundreds of thousands in the bank, being able to play on the biggest stages in the esports world, and being one of the best among hundreds of millions of registered players are all things Funk has accomplished. And talking about millions, we also need to talk about Som, one of the most decorated esports players of all time, having made millions in his many years of playing various different titles. His professional gaming career would begin on the game Dota 2. Already in 2012, when the esports scene was small and making money from competing was almost impossible. Som, or previously known under the alias Kizzles, however, was good enough to be one of the few to make money from playing video games, making his first $100 in earnings on June 30th of 2012, and an additional 100 would come in only three months later. These earnings weren't from any random top 55 or 65 like we would have expected if it was Fortnite. No, both of these tournaments was won by the man himself. Now, Dota 2 in 2012 wasn't even officially released. It was still playtesting in the beta version, so the entire prize pool in the game was extremely limited, with the biggest tournament, the International, only giving out $1.6 million. These prize pools would drastically improve only a few years later, when Dota was already given out almost 20 million in potential winnings in the TI. But this was already too late for Kizzles. Or as we know him, Som, he had already moved on to the pretty similar game Heroes of the Storm, a decision he would later say he regret. Now, the regret probably wasn't too bad considering Som went on to become one of the absolute best players in the world in that title. I'm talking over $80,000 in official earnings from 2015 until 2018, being signed to some amazing organizations like Tempo Storm, and a whopping 14 tournament wins in his few years playing the game. Now, Som has a quality that is probably both good and bad, and that is that he is quick to switch games and leave everything behind for a new opportunity. Just like he did when Heroes of the Storm got released and he left Dota 2 behind for good, he did the same when the game Fortnite came out, a decision that he would not regret. Being able to be one of the first players into new games gives you a massive head start if you have competitive experience from previous titles. And Sam was able to capitalize off of his esports experience already 
Lee very early on in the Fortnite world, when he attended a PAX West in the beginning of September 2018. He would go on to take 24th, taking home $5,000 and understanding that the potential of his Fortnite career was endless. Only one month after, he would be invited to play his first full skirmish week alongside Bizzle. This would of course turn out fantastic as they would end up placing second, which is a placement they're both notorious for getting. But it didn't matter because they took home $47,500 collectively. After this tournament, Sam could still be seen competing in various of the remaining tournaments of 2018, getting 14th in full skirmish solos the week after he won 47k with Bizzle, and at the very end of the year, he could once again be seen competing in a LAN environment, like he did at PAX West, and ended with a 4th place finish at the now mostly forgotten tournament of WSOE. His tournament placements ended with an additional 10k in his pocket after his insane performance with Bezel. 2018, or in other words, the first year of some competing in Fortnite, would end with $49,500 in earnings. On top of that, in the beginning of the year, he also bagged 19500 from Heroes of the Storm, so almost 70k just from tournament earnings in the year he switched games. That speaks volumes to the kind of player Sam is. But as we all know, 2019 was the year where Sam would really go big. He would start the year with the secret skirmish, where he didn't play particularly well, getting 22nd in duos and 20th in solos. But he did make 10k regardless. After he got home from the LAN, he would pick up a new duos partner to play with. Funnily enough, another player famous for getting second places today. You might see where this is going. His new duo was scented. In their second event playing together, they would get just that, second place. In their third, third place, and in their fourth, they would finally win their very first event. Then, as everyone was ready for the World Cup and Epic decided to host a World Cup warm-up tournament, they would go on to get, you guessed it, second place, solidifying the fact that they were ready to compete and perform in the upcoming life-changing opportunity. Starting in the quals off, some would finish 75th in the first week of solos, a performance the multi-game talent was far from happy with. He knew that if he wanted to ensure his spot in the New York Finals, he would have to come up with a better strategy for the upcoming opportunity. Opportunities. Unfortunately, the result in the following duo's opportunity was far from satisfactory as well, as they ended on a 31st place, which to normal people would have been an incredible accomplishment, but not to the likes of Senten and Sam. Then, as the new strategy for solos was made and week 3 came around, Sam was finally able to get his ticket to the finals. He did so by placing 5th and winning 2,250 bucks, and of course also guaranteed his 50k. Sadly for Sam, he was not able to double qualify, even after switching duos from scented to symmetrical, and in the remaining weeks of solos, he wasn't able to break top 250 in the finals again either. But that didn't matter, because he already had a spot in New York, and when the big day came around, Sam was locked in. This was kind of weird, since according to Sam, prior to the World Cup, his scrims practice had been going horribly and he wasn't even sure he'd break the top 50. His experience from playing other competitive esports and performing when it really matters the most, coupled with his insanely smart strategy, as well as being able to heavily limit mistakes, in comparison to most others, playing under the immense pressure of millions of people watching and the life-changing opportunity made Sam a place second. And with it, he also became a millionaire. 1.8 million dollars in the span of a few hours of playing. He had really made it when it mattered the most. When the World Cup had concluded and Sam went back home, the good placements and earnings kept coming in. But when the game Valorant got teased in October of 2019, Sam once again did what he does best. He didn't hesitate for for a second and decided it once again was time to swap games. Valorant was officially released 8 months later, and Sam dropped everything Fortnite related to not only play the game of Valorant, but he also wanted to go pro yet again. To no surprise to anyone, Sam quickly became better than 99% of players, being one of the first in the previously called Valorant rank, now named Radiant. In August of 2020, the veteran org Dignitas noticed Sam's talent and picked him up to make a professional team. Getting signed to an org like Dignitas comes with a hefty monthly salary, meaning just two months after Valorant was officially out, Sam was playing whilst receiving comfortable full-time pay. Not bad at all for the now 25-year-old. Sadly, the performance of Team Dignitas was extremely underwhelming, and in the end of March of 2021, he would no longer be a part of the org. His Valorant ventures didn't end there though, as he kept on grinding and eight months later got given another massive opportunity by a big team. This time, it was the Guard. Unfortunately, this 
didn't work out too good either. But he was able to get one year with the team, giving it his all. And you can't do more than that. Through Sam's veteran career, he made $5,280 from competing. But probably 20 times that from big teams believing in him. Even though Sam's veteran career didn't turn out quite as good as his Heroes of the Storm or Fortnite career, there is still no denying his talents. Recently, he has not been as into competing in major video game titles, other than playing the game parallel at, well, not surprisingly, the very highest level, managing to squeeze himself into the top 10 on the leaderboards there as well. He's now 28 years old, has been a professional in four different games, and as a result of his decade-long journey, he is one of the most decorated esports players the world has ever seen. Recently, he has also attempted casting Valorant, he has been around exploring the world, and by the look of things, he is now finally enjoying a bit of his hard-earned money. Sam's story is one of mastering no hesitation, jumping to the next opportunity without looking back, and as a result of all of his qualities he has built throughout his many years of competitive esports, he has set himself up financially speaking for the rest of his life and left a legacy few will be able to ever replicate.